Okay. And when we talk about the free movement or restrictions removed on free on movement, do you think that this should equally apply to the goods and possibly services which will definitely accompany those who will be moving from maybe one country to another? What do you think about the goods and the services? Will it equally be free from taxes? And, uh, you know, w what do you think about that? That's that's an aspect that needs to be looked upon, right? And mm. and some of these uh, free quote unquote uh, free visa or free trade will be considered between from country to country. For example, between Cameroon and Nigeria, Cameroon can decide or Nigeria can decide that um, we are going to have some some particular goods imported from Cameroon to Nigeria free of charge, tax-free and stuff. And then in return, this is what we get. It's, it's, it's a matter of countries within the continent deciding, okay, what do I deal with? Who do I deal with? And, 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 and what are the conditions put in place? What's the feasibility studies done to make sure that some of these free services or free goods are actually free because again lewis they might yeah. tell us you know uh this this particular um, aspect is free and then when you come to find out it is not actually free right and so some of these things really needs to be studied they need to be looked upon our authorities need to do their homework which is what i doubt will be done knowing knowing where we all come from, I just hope and pray that when this eventually takes off, it, it doesn't become another chaos that the continent is going to be dealing with because it will explode. The other day when I watched um, the, the news that um, a plane that had, had left Nigeria heading to Saudi Arabia was returned and all visas revoked in the air, I could only imagine the humiliation, the, the, the consequences of such act. And it's happening in the middle of um, the, the, the Saudi uh, Africa summit. So this calls this these are some of the 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 um these are some of the measures that have been taken against the african continent and its citizens that should motivate us that should wake us up that should get us you know scratching our heads and waking up and questioning why are we succumbing to such disgrace from the world to such humiliation from countries that should not even be competing with the world. Saudi shouldn't be competing with Africa. Saudi shouldn't be competing with, with, with our continent, with any country within the continent. But because we find ourselves where we are with mismanagement, corruption, um, leaders who know not how to lead, these are some of the consequences. And I think... Um, we as Africans need to sit back and look at some of these things and get angry enough, really angry enough to wake up and start dealing with each other and start communicating with each other and start trusting each other. Because if we continue the way we are, it could get even worse. Thank you, Lois. Thank you once again, Madam Vivian Ayer, for, and you've just highlighted another very important aspect, the fact that Africans for very long have not been able to speak in a single voice, and not having that uh, single diplomatic voice is the reason why we're facing some of the humiliations that we uh, are facing, just like you highlighted uh, earlier. And this equally affects uh, the um, decisions which will be taken among member states. If we're not able to speak in one voice, Ma Madam Viviana Yafo, do you see the decisions or policies which will be put in place to manage the free movement of people? Do you think uh, it could be well managed, considering equally that the 
the Pan-African body, the African Union, which is supposed to oversee uh, the effective implementation or manage some of the lapses or shortcomings which might arise as a result of uh, these uh, free movements. It's equally, uh, many call it uh, a negotiation that, of course, is, it's dead. Its decisions cannot actually, uh, you know, are not very much uh, effective. Now, the fact that we don't speak in one voice and the fact that there's no overall institution to overlook the policies which we put in place, do you see it lasting uh, for long? Is there sustainable? Do you see it, uh, uh, how can it be sustained, the decisions and policies which surrounds free movement of uh, people? The answer to that question is, <laughs> uh, is, is a heavy no. It's unfortunately, it's, it's a heavy no. Policies of this magnitude, if, if you notice, uh, the European Union only flourishes and does well in, in some of these policies because within the European Union uh, itself, uh, its citizens do not need to be economic refugees. They don't need to. They travel because, um, um, because of tourism. They travel because they want to discover places. They travel because they want to uh, impact their knowledge um, upon their continent. They do not travel because of conflicts. They do not travel because of refugee uh, uh, status, uh, seeking for asylum, you know, uh, majorly. They don't. So um, my answer to that question is no. The continent, as far as um, its um, unity of purpose, um, 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 status is concerned, it's, it's a no for me because the AU itself has been incapable to bring uh, the leadership or call the leadership of uh, uh, Africa to order. Because when you look at what has been going on within our continent within the past decade or two, um, if the African Union was serious enough, it could have called to order a lot, a lot of these things that have been going on, a lot of the wars, a lot of the 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 um, um, economic uh, uh, malfeasance and and just some of the things that have kept our continent uh, uh, under you know the the the, the rubble, and so far that institution has not been able to call itself, its members, to order, let alone <laughs> taking up measures that will enhance or enforce some kind of order within the continent. And so um, that explains my reason why um, from get-go I mentioned that several, several things need to be accomplished before some of these free visa uh, um, measures are instituted. Because if not, how would you think that the main institution, the main organization, uh, namely the AU, which is supposed to bring order, which is supposed to um, um, sit together and set some of those security rules and set some of those economic rules and set some of those political rules, you know, socio-political rules that binds a lot of these things. Remember, the EU had to actually sit down and draft some of the major, major, uh, major, uh, 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 um, um, you know, some of major uh, uh, institutions that were going to bind the Schengen visa uh, travel thing, right? And so at this point, we don't have that in place. We don't have even leaders within the, the AU who can sit and look at each other in the eye and talk. How do we accomplish this? Who sits down? We don't have level-headedness amongst our, our, our leaders. And so when, when one leader says, oh, this is what I want, this is what I don't want, the other leader counteracts and, 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 and says, oh, no, 
uh, we cannot do this because um, this or that leader might only want, want what benefits him personally and, and, his, and his small circle and not what benefits the, the entire country. And I think that that's what has been really, really troubling within the African continent because our leaders really do not. Um, the, the measures our leaders take have never been measures that benefit the African youth, the African continent, and the overall uh, well-being of us. It has always been measures that benefit them and their little circle. And I'm hoping and praying that before some of these measures are put in place, Lois, some of these things needs to be thought about. Hmm. And it starts from the leadership. It starts from the leadership. There has to be a change of leadership for this to succeed. The youths need to start taking control. The youths need to start rising up and standing up and speaking up. Okay. And taking control of their future and destinies. Mm. Thank you.